Hey everybody, this is Neil Ferguson, a contributor to The New School. And today we are going live with uh, Sam Tierney from Firestone Walker here in a second about some New Zealand hops and the new Propagator series that uh, Firestone Walker is rolling out right now. And we will be tasting some of those beers as well. So, All right, can you, can you uh, shut the door all the way here? Hey, Sam. Hey, Neil. Yeah. How's yeah. It going? Good. Just, um, yeah, ready to rock here. I'm excited to do this. All right. Well, uh, yeah, welcome. Uh, so just to give people a little heads up of what we're doing today, um, we're going to be talking about Firestone Walker's new uh, mixed 12-pack right here. Right. Crafted through hops, and it's got some – uh, specifically some beers using New Zealand hops and you guys are just up to some really cool stuff with New Zealand hops today um, and you know so I have here Sam Tierney who's a R&D brewer at Firestone so welcome Sam um, thank you you want to just give us a little bit of background on what you do at Firestone before we start trying some of these beers sure absolutely um so uh, Firestone has a brew pub down in Los Angeles in Venice Beach called The Propagator. And that's where we develop a lot of our uh, new beers, new recipes, just play around with new ideas, um, you know, and have a place down here in the city where, you know, people can come and, you know, we get a ton of traffic in and out of LAX or, you know, at least uh, we used to when travel was, was more of a thing. Um, so, you know, right. we will get in the future, but um you know, yeah, we do a lot of work down here just, um, just yeah, coming up with new stuff and, and exploring new ideas. And, you know, the, the idea to do this um, came around about, um, well, we opened five years ago, you know, it was a kind of going before then for a while. But, um, but yeah, so that's what we're doing down here. We just have a 10 barrel brewery. And, um, and I head up brewing operations. And I just have um, one brewer that works with me. And, um, and we knock everything out down here. Yeah. And then um, recently, over the last year, we started canning our beer as well. Um, you know, we were kind of forced into that since our tap rooms had to close last year, but it's kind of become a cool vehicle for us to get some new beers out there. So we're selling all those on our website direct. Now we can ship in California. Um, and then we also sell direct at all the breweries, but most of the beer we make other than that is all just sold in house at our three tap rooms. So you're like the guy at Firestone Walker that gets to have the most fun. It seems like you get to do the experimental stuff, right? We do have fun. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm, I'm not going to deny that. Um, you know, I like to think, you know, we have so many varied programs, though, between, you know, Barrel Works and our vintage program, doing all kinds of different Oak Age projects and beers. So, um, you know, there's a lot of people having fun. It's not just me. Yeah. You guys are always, the whole brewery, it seems like, is always doing all kinds of cool projects. Uh, speaking of which, I guess we could get into uh, our first beer. What do you What do you want to drink first? I, I have three different ones here, so mm -hmm. I, I would leave it up to you um, to set us off on this journey. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I'm thinking our um, single hop Nelson West Coast um, propagator series. Yeah, I know you got that one. You so I was gonna <laughs> get that going first. I got one of those right here as well. Um, cool. Yeah. So let's check that one out. And this is a uh, West Coast IPA, you said. So, it's yes, be yeah. On the so in yeah. our um, in our mix packs now, we're doing two different ones. So we do a can and a bottle pack. And um, the way we've doing it, it's nice. You can get one. We want to put in a propagator, um, you know, single hop feature beer in each one. And uh, you know, bottles more classic West Coast, you know, can and then can for hazy IPAs basically. So we're kind of splitting up between those. And right now, the two, you know, are, are both featuring New Zealand hops. So this is the um, the Nelson, so that's featuring Nelson hops, all from the uh, 2020 harvest in New Zealand. And talk about, uh, like, what do you like about Nelson hops in speci specifically, and why uh, why use it in a single hop beer? Well, Nelson has been a hop that I've been in love with for a long time. Um, it's just, you know, I, I think the first time I ever had a Nelson beer was Alpine's Nelson IPA. And that was probably, oh man, I was so, I, I think it was like 2009. Um, you know, it's probably almost 12 years ago now. 
And, um, and it blew my mind. It was amazing. I think that's the first beer I ever had that featured New Zealand hops. And I was so floored by the expression, that kind of like grapey white wine, you know, saw blanc thing. And, um, and I didn't know what to make of it, you know. And so, you know, that hop was pretty hard to get for a few years. You know, I, I was playing around with them on the homebrew scale. But it turns out that, um, you know, there wasn't really much Nelson being grown. And for a small brewery, you know, like Alpine at, at that time, um, they could get some. But, you know, uh, Firestone has always had a, a bit harder time because we are a larger brewery. And, you know, by the time we wanted to get some, it was always a little bit less than we wanted. So over the years we played, we did use Nelson in a Luponic distortion release before. Um, but this is the first time we've been able to get one to actually feature it in a beer release. And so we're really stoked on that. I think um, everything just came together. 2020 was the first year where uh, our brewmaster, Matt Burleson, was able to get down, you know, to New Zealand a couple years in a row and really start making those relationships with the farmers down there. And we got some good contracts signed with growers down there to get the hops that we needed. And, uh, and this is the first year we've really been able to feature a bunch of New Zealand varieties because of that. So I'm, I'm really excited. We're kind of like having our New Zealand moment right now. Um, where we're really just kind of celebrating all these hops that we finally um, have gotten into quantities we want. But um, yeah. the Nelson in particular um, has always been one of my favorites. Like I said, there's other varieties out there. I mean, we, we'll talk about the Nectar on a sec, but, um, but the Nelson's killer. I mean, it just, there's something um, a little intangible about the character you get from it. That's just got this fruit profile. That's so unique where it rivals the impact of, you know, stuff like Citra and Mosaic um, that are so popular, you know, here, but, um, but it's different. I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's just got that New Zealand kind of vibe, you know, and, and part of it is that kind of like white wine like thing, which, um, you know, it must be something, you know, in the air, the water, the soil down there, because, you know, the New Zealand Sauve Blanc really does have a similar type character. And, um, and that's, yeah, that's, that's why I can put it. Yeah. That's, it's interesting. It's definitely a unique hop and it's, it's cool to see uh, some of these, I would say Firestone Walkers on the larger side for um, a brewery that's diving deep into New Zealand hops these days. Uh, it seems like small craft breweries are obsessed with them, you know, so it's cool to see what you guys are up to. Oh yeah. No, I think, you know, um, definitely for the Nelson, um, you know, shout out to hop revolution. Um, you know, they, they got a bunch of new acres in the ground and um, they were able to get us this Nelson and, you know, it's, it, that's really what it took was for some, you know, great growers um, to just do some expansions and really be able to say, hey, you know, there's so much demand out there. There's so many brewers that want to use this and, you know, they're committed to expanding, but keeping quality super high, focusing on high quality pellets and really getting us the hops in the best condition possible. Um, you know, and I think the Nelson that we got from 2020 is actually for Nelson exceptionally fruity and soft. Uh, Nelson can be a little more on the dank side sometimes gets a little grungy, um, leaning more into that, like, kind of slight, diesel-y, almost oniony character. And I right. think that um, this Nelson, though, is, like, really grapey and just, like, fruity and tropical. Um, and so I really like, I mean, to me, it makes just this, this super well-balanced, kind of crushable beer, though, that's got a lot of great flavor, so. Yeah, it's a super tasty and West Coast IPA, just real refreshing. So, good summer beer. <laughs> um, yeah, and, oh, good. So yeah, do you want to move into into uh, go from clear to hazy, maybe? Yeah. With the nectar on. Sure. Yeah, I'm for this. So we got this one right here, and uh, yeah, I guess give give the people maybe a little bit of background on the nectar on hop because it's it's fairly new in in, in the beer scene. It's definitely um, starting to pick up in its use, but a lot yeah. of people probably haven't even tried it yet. So. No, yeah, you know, like I said, we've been a little behind the times on New Zealand hops, just, you know, just because of the scale we work at and everything like that. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't go after it as hard back in the day as some other brewers did. Um, but Nectaron is one that we've kind of like, I think, you know, with Matt going down to New Zealand more, um, he was able to kind of, you know, make those relationships with some of the growers down there. And um, this one, it was a uh, Hort 4337 was the number. And so the boxes we got still say that, but they've, you know, subsequently named it Nectaron. And that was an experimental that they've been working on for a while. And, um, and Matt had gotten a sample of it down there, tasted some stuff in the experimental phase early on that wasn't really getting to the U S yet. And uh, just really loved what he was getting out of it. You know, it's like, you get this really interesting mix of this like passion fruit tropical. And then um, 
this kind of like dank and citrusy note too that kind of reminds me of like a little bit more of like some kind of like Pacific Northwest vibe that you get of some of the other stuff, you know, maybe like that you get in like Mosaic, Amarillo, um, you know, like bordering on maybe a little bit of CTZ, um, maybe not quite, you know, that's, that's always like getting into the dankness territory, right. but, um, <laughs> but it's just cool because it kind of, it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Cause you know, like, um, you know, we think of like looking for that New Zealand character and that's what we prize in these hops. And that's why I think Nelson has always been the standout because it really exemplifies um, you know, how far you can go into that realm. Um, but, you know, the New Zealand brewers too, you know, they want a hop that's also got a little more of the punchiness and dankness that some of our great hops do here. So, you know, I think this hop almost kind of moves back a little bit in that direction and it's trying to pull in something a little more like Citra, Simcoe, you know, Amarillo, like, you know, I basically, you know, just think of all the, all the big good IPA hops that we grow in the Pacific Northwest and, um, and Nelson's kind of, or, um, Sorry, uh, Nectaron is kind of like a great mix of all of that, where you bring in a little bit of that New Zealand character and a little bit more of that kind of American high alpha dankness. Um, and I think it makes a really fun beer, um, especially in the hazy profile, which for us is just like, you know, rounder, fruitier, slightly sweeter. Um, you know, neither of these beers are really big beers. Um, with these single hot beers, that are modest in alcohol. So they're not like full on hit you over the head type IPAs and ideas that they really just kind of drive the character of that hop without getting too much alcohol or fermentation character that you get in a higher alcohol IPA. So it's, it's an intentional move on your part to do something a little bit more sessionable with these single IPA beers. Yeah. Yeah. It just became a sweet spot for us. And um, so, you know, they're almost kind of like, I mean, they're not session IPAs, but they're, um, you know, they're 5.6%. So for us, that's kind of your like, new school, you know, I mean, it's, it's almost like an IPA pale ale in a way where it's just like, it's a beer that you can have several of and is really drinkable, but, you know, but we're giving you the same hop character we do in our IPAs where, you know, heavy dry hop and, uh, and a boil hops and all that. So heavier than we ever would have done IPA or a pale ale in the past. Yeah. Well, somebody just commented and said your hazies are uh, on point. So some people like them. That's good. <laughs> I'd say it's yeah. pretty, pretty tasty. I like, a. Uh, it's real light, kind of just fruity and, you know, a, again, a perfect summer beer. Yeah, no, I think this is great character, you know, and like, you know, you're saying Nectron hasn't really been out there that much yet, but we're going to start seeing a lot more of it, I think, you know. Um, I mean, it's just, it's a great all-around top, and, um, you know, it's just, it's cool that we've been able to get these two beers out, you know, right, right as this hop's kind of starting to get well-known, so hopefully, um, right. you know, Whenever you do that, whenever you, you kind of like publicize a new hop and not very many people are using it yet, you can always be kind of a victim of your own success and then everybody else gets it and it's harder to get. So, you know, yeah. hopefully uh, things will be nice and balanced, you know, as far as that goes. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and, you know, before we get into the last, the last uh, of these New Zealand beers that I think we're going to drink, uh, I'm just curious for you as a brewer, what's your personal favorite New Zealand hop? What do you like the most? Ooh, okay. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, both of these are great. Um, I love Nectron Nelson, but my number one, which is in the new Luponic, uh, is Rawaka. And I, there's something about Rawaka that to me, that, that was the most elusive, you know, like Rawaka, we can never get Rawaka. And, you know, most brewers have never used much Rawaka, you know, you get in little bits here and there, but it's never been a hop that there was much supply of. It's hard to grow. It's kind of fickle. Um, and I think just in the last couple harvests, some more growers have dialed it in a little bit and are feeling better about, um, you know, putting some more acreage out there because, um, yeah, it, it was always really hard to get. It has been around for a while. It's not brand new. Um, it was just a little frustrating. Um, but it has, like I said, you know, Nelson sometimes can get a little into the like kind of diesel dank character. And um, Rawaka is like full on hit you over the head, you know, um, in the best way, you know, and like, and it's funny, I, I, you know, for lack of a better word, it's, it is a little diesel and I like that as a descriptor. Um, I know that probably maybe turns some people off, but if you think of, um, Sauv Blancs, um, New Zealand Sauv Blancs have a little bit of that character and then, um, some German wines too, German white wines tend to have it. And some of those wines, you know, um, if you're, if you're drinking some of the, the stuff from the Rhine region, you know, those are some of the most prized white wines in the world. And that's part of the unique character they have too. It's this, 
something you get with the thiols and the different kind of ester components in the oil profile. And um, yeah, and I think it's just, it's really cool hop. And, and you don't need a ton of it to give a big impact. So it's really nice in a blend to round out other stuff. Um, we actually just did another IPA here, um, which we put into uh, 16 ounce cans just at the propagator. And that was the Elena um, IPA. And that featured Nelson and Rwaka, just those two hops. Nice. Yeah, I know up here in the Pacific Northwest, I've seen a good amount of smaller breweries doing West Coast single hop Rwaka beers. And it just, it works great. Yeah, I, I love it. Uh, well, speaking of which, do we want to try out this Luponic Distortion? I think number 18, is that the one? Yeah. Awesome. We made it to 18. We're finally legal. <laughs> legal for some things, not to drink, right? Yeah, no, I can't drink beer yet. Uh, Can you but... give us a, give, give just like a little bit of background real quick on the Luponic series that you you guys do? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, Luponic started several years ago now. I'm trying to think, was it 2014, I want to say? Um, you know, and it's just been it's been quite the project, you know, I was really excited about it first. So I've, um, I've been with Firestone for um, just over 10 years now. And, you know, I was a brewer for eight years up at the main brewery in Paso. And I remember when we started to get this project going and I think I was just moving over into our yeast handling role and starting to like, you know, work on some smaller projects, new things. And, you know, um, this idea came around that we were going to start doing a rotating hop series as kind of a new seasonal thing. And, you know, we, we were developing at the time, um, you know, it was just when like IPAs, I feel like, you know, the West Coast scene was starting to change a little bit. This is, you know, pretty hazy, really. I mean, you know, everybody, you know, people knew about Heady Topper and there was a little bit of stuff happening on the East Coast that was starting to change people's ideas about IPAs. And I think a lot of West Coast brewers at the time before the full on haze thing happened, were kind of reacting to that and saying, hey, we can make a little bit lower bitterness, a little more fruit forward less crystal malt, you know, trying to move in that direction. And so the kind of the base of the ponic started there. It's a little lower alcohol, 5.9. Um, and the idea was that, you know, there's zero crystal malt. It's just, you know, two row wheat, touch of carapils. We like for a little bit of foam, but, um, but no real crystal. And, um, and we just kind of, you know, it was a, a good kind of um, somewhat malleable canvas to just keep working on a rotating hop uh, on it. So, you know, each one, we came up with a different hot blend based on everything we could source that year, you know, try different combinations and every new combination that we wanted to try, we just did, you know, and so everyone was like pulling the new experimental varieties. I think, you know, we started out, you know, with stuff like Talus before it was Talus, Sabro before it was Sabro, um, you know, um, Laurel before it was Laurel when they were all just numbered, you know, so all the experimentals that have kind of hit the market since then, we've all integrated into Luponics, you know, before then, um, and then come up with other hops that we love, you know, so we always see a lot of mosaic, citrus, Simcoe, you know, we use the classics a lot in those two in the blends to try to kind of round things out and really make the best IPA we can. Um, so yeah, 18 different ones, you know, I never thought we'd get to 18. It's gotten, it's gotten difficult, but luckily, you know, we keep getting access to new hops, um, new hops keep hitting the market. So we're, we're able to come up with unique recipes every time that, um, you know, I've been really happy with recently. I think we've been doing a great job on, you know, and I don't, I don't have as much of a hand in that since I moved down to the propagator. Um, all that stuff gets developed still since we have the recipe already worked out. We just kind of do each new one up there by um, rubbing hops on the table, coming up with a blend and then trying out a test batch. And then, you know, we'll tweak it a little bit, but, um, but that's pretty much all done up there now. Right. And yeah, I mean, you were talking about the white wine characteristics of Nelson and I definitely get that with this Luponic up front. Uh, yeah, sure. no, absolutely. So, you know, it's, um, so it's the two hops, Nelson Nectaron, um, plus Rwaka and Motueka. And some of your you favorites know, in there. Yeah, exactly. So you're getting the Rwaka. So I think you get a little bit of that edge that I was talking about with the Rwaka. It's a little sharper. It just, ha it has a focus and a sharpness to it. Um, and then the Motueka has got this really interesting kind of like herbaceous and limey note to it. Um, that I really like a lot, like really zesty, lots of like lime zest, lemon zest. Um, so yeah, it's a great hop combo. And I think all, all those together in that beer, this is one of the best aquatics we've done. Um, you know, just, just to me, it is like a feature, you know, of like the 2020 New Zealand harvest. These are kind of like four of the main 
hops that you're going to get out of New Zealand that people use for IPAs. You know, obviously there's some other ones that are popular in other styles. Um, but those four hops really, those are kind of the, the, uh, the cream of the crop right now. And so I think, you know, crafting an IPA with all four is really kind of just featuring and saying, Hey, here's like, this is our New Zealand Lupin distortion. We're just kind of giving it to you, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah, totally. And so just so people know, um, you know, you can get the Propagator Nectaron and the uh, Luponic number 18 in this 12 pack, which also comes with the uh, Mine Haze and Union Jack IPA. Those are not New Zealand hops, though, right? On, in that one? In no, yeah, years. we don't use any New Zealand varieties in those. Yeah, the, those are all, uh, I'll say all, all American. Um, yeah, actually American and a touch German. You know, we like our Mandarin of Bavaria. That's one of our favorite hops. And so a little bit of that finds its right. way into Mine Haze, but otherwise it's all American. Cool. Well, yeah, I think that these are, these are available in a, a lot of states at the moment. So um, I would say I'm a huge fan of New Zealand hops and I just gobble it all up whenever I can find breweries doing it. Um, and it's cool to see a, such a large brewery actually, you know, t experimenting with them, especially some of these hops like Ruwaka and Motika and stuff. So um, that's great. And I don't know. Is there anything else that you want to mention just about the, the programs that you guys have going on right now with New Zealand hops or just anything experimental that Firestone's up to these days? Yeah, well, we have a couple new things um, going right now. So like I said, we just did the Elena IPA. We've still got some of that um, on tap at our locations. I think cans are just about out. Whenever we do these can drops, you know, we do a 20 barrel batch. So there's, you know, there's not a ton of uh, cans out there for us, you know, um, right. pretty typical small brewery release, but, you know, 20 barrels of cans doesn't last too long between our locations and shipping. Um, we have our newest uh, can releases coming out uh, actually next week, and it's our Gen 5 IPA. That's our anniversary IPA we do here at the Propagator. Nice. And um, our Gen 1 IPA is our flagship IPA. It's a Citra Mosaic kind of West Coast style IPA, um, kind of like new school West coast where it's unfiltered. It's a little hazy, you know? Um, and, uh, each year we kind of modify the recipe a little bit and make it into a double IPA for our anniversary. So this year, you know, because we're jazzed up on the New Zealand hop varieties right now, uh, we decided to mix those in. So it's Citra Mosaic, uh, Rawaka, Nectaron and Nelson. Uh, so we got all those hops playing together. So we got our heavy hitters, you know, from right. Washington <laughs> with the heavy hitters from New Zealand all together. Um, so that beer is going to be coming out next week. I'm really excited for that. And, um, but yeah, it's, you know, like I said, it's unfortunately not hitting distribution. It's only, only direct sales, um, which is too bad. It sounds tasty, but I was going to ask real quick, you know, is, are there plans to bring 16 ounce cans in the distribution? I know, that's what people want nowadays in a lot of cases for, for Firestone. Yeah. I mean, I think like for now um, we're going to be keeping the program here small. Um, it's just a way, you know, to kind of reward our, you know, closest and most loyal kind of customers here, everything like right. that. And it's, um, you know, we're just, I think focusing on other areas for wide distro. Um, but, you know, and we're, we're going into different formats too. Um, you know, 19 ounce cans, 24 ounce cans for some of our bigger releases. Um, but that kind of the, yeah, the label 16 ounce stuff, at least for now is going to be, um, you know, in-house small releases. Cool. Well then I'm, I'm going to have to get down to California one of these days and try it. Luckily you guys are just a state over from us. So, um, well, awesome. Yeah. Sam, I appreciate you talking with me. Um, Sam Tierney, R and D brewer at Firestone Walker talking with neil ferguson from the new school and uh thanks for letting us try some of these beers it's they're perfect just in time for the summer so uh all right thanks a lot man Appreciate yeah it. thank you neil cheers Have a good night <laughs> you too